Sad beige mums are ruining their children's development all for the sake of an aesthetic. They are spray painting toys, removing toys that do not fit their aesthetic and are proud of it. Today, I really wanted to give you my hot take as an interior designer with five years of experience in the paint industry to really discuss whether or not these sad beige mums have taken it a step too far. I originally wanted to paint the body of the tree a brown, but then I realized, you know what, I want my tree to look a little bit alive. Hello, it's me, a sad beige mom, and I'm back with part two of my step two roller coaster makeover. I'm continuing my quest to turn the world of childhood wonder into a grayscale adventure. So strap in for another episode of the Chromatic Chronicles, where the only spectrum we're interested in is the soothing palette of beige. <sighs> See, this is the mom that really concerns me because I know that majority of people are like this when they're painting their space, let alone probably their child's toy. And that's because she's not even using primer. Now, I know someone will probably be like, oh, but that particular spray paint doesn't require a primer. Just because it doesn't require it doesn't mean you should probably just not do it at all. If you're gonna do it, at least use a primer, at least use a top coat and she hasn't and that bothers me. Now, not to play the devil's advocate here, but maybe these sad beige mums have got it right. With Gen Alpha being the first real generation of iPad kids and having overstimulation constantly at their fingertips and really frying their brains, maybe it's actually not such a bad idea that these sad beige mums have made these completely blank spaces. Perhaps it gives their brains a little bit of time to recoup and to just deal with the fact that they've been overstimulated for the last six hours of Pokemon. So maybe there is some level of positivity about this. Well, first of all, I think you probably shouldn't give your child an iPad, but that's just my opinion. And second, kids need colors for mental development. When a child is blindfolded from a very young age and they do not have the sensory experience, it's a use it or lose it mentality in the human body. So having these extremely muted down spaces where even their toys don't have that contrast, it's going to take a lot longer for these kids to be able to create those new neural pathways and end up developing. And because Gen Alpha is already so overstimulated and mentally destroyed from iPads, I don't really think that they can really withstand another setback on their mental development. So I'm sure by now we're all wondering how in the world did we get to sad beige mums? Like what was the progression for us to get to this point? And honestly, it started with a few things. Originally, it probably started with the fact that we didn't want gendered clothing and gendered items anymore. We wanted to have more options than just blue for boy, pink for girl. And then from there, we also wanted something that was non-toxic, that was better for the environment and more eco-friendly as well. So then you started to get these more natural sort of toys coming back into fashion with timber and all these more wooden block sort of style toys coming back instead of purely plastic materials. Now, to me, this actually all sounds okay. I actually agree with all of this. But the thing is, I think these parents have just taken it a step too far because now it's no longer about those core values. It's now about the aesthetic. And as soon as it becomes about the aesthetic, everything just seems to go out the window. So anything that you previously agreed with beforehand just seems to have just been gone and you don't care about it anymore because it doesn't suit the aesthetic anymore. With the cost of these minimalist toys costing an arm and a leg, I don't really blame these parents for trying to go out on their own and DIYing their children's toys. But when there is a certain age, you kind of can't DIY certain toys because there is the possibility of having to go to the emergency room because your child's eaten plastic, your child has gone ahead and smashed glass, your child has gone ahead and eaten paint, which is what I'm most concerned about because what's going into your child's stomach because of your little crafty DIYs? If you can't afford those natural minimalist pieces of toys that they're going to grow out of anyway perhaps there should just be toys or you know a stick from the garden if you're really desperate like i don't know and not to throw shade at my own mom but she was 100 percent a sad beige mom before it was cool and our previous house it was just all cream 
the walls were cream, the carpet was cream, the couches were cream. The only thing that had any form of life in it was the red timber furniture, which we still have. And honestly, I think that's part of the reason why I'm a maximalist. <laughs> Welcome in. Yeah, you can put your shoes anywhere. Just throw them and see where they land. Uh, can you keep your coat on? Actually, um, that shirt you're wearing is a, a shade of brown that brings back memories. This is the color room where I attempt to catch up on all of the years of color I was denied as a child. Oh, here are these sunglasses. Some people some people find it a bit intense. Um, the whole spectrum of color can be viewed from any point in this room, but it's still not enough. I never really liked our home decor growing up. I always felt it was just very one dimensional. And I think I really just wish I had more color, especially in that house. And I think now that I can kind of paint my own space, I've kind of gone the complete opposite direction where I'm sure when I have my own kids, they're probably going to be sad beige kids. <laughs> but I think there is honestly a happy medium between these two. Sad beige mums seem to have taken it maybe a smidge too far, especially the ones that are fully aesthetically pleasing. But, you know, fully maximalistic spaces are probably a little bit too overwhelming for children as well. So we really need to be somewhere in the middle. Now, I've certainly helped my fair share of parents and children making sure that they could choose the right color for their child's bedroom. Obviously, you don't want something that is super overstimulating because it is a bedroom and you want to make sure your child sleeps. So trying to balance what the child wants with the bright magenta pink and trying to balance what the parent wants, which is probably a very, very subtle pink if they can get away with it. I loved doing that because it was always a fun challenge to try and find something that they would both agree with. And it's very interesting to see that certain people can see more colors than others. Like, you know, and this isn't even talking about people that are colorblind. Some people can see more colors than others. And I think it does come down to the fact of, are you exposed to it a lot as a child? And these parents are certainly putting these kids on a back foot where they may only be able to tell really strong contrasting colors because they won't have that really early development of, okay, I can see that this is pink and that this is red. And then they can make that differentiation from a young age. But if they're doing it on a lot later stage, they may not ever develop it. And I've met a lot of parents where like, you know, they aren't colorblind and they cannot tell the difference between certain colors. And it does make me question, were these parents previously grown up in really colorless homes where they haven't had to make those distinctions? With the knowledge that our human body uses or loses things, I think it's probably better to have more color than less color. Now the color white also is seen as like this luxurious, clean, and overall pure sort of color, which is why minimalism was such a big thing and still is. And especially with so many distractions these days, minimalism allows people to kind of have that mental reset and break from the everything of life, from the technology, from your work, from just the general hoo-ha of everything. It allows them to have that moment of peace. But having these extremely sleek, ultra modern spaces and these almost not natural looking homes is kind of this way of saying, hey, this is something that you can't have and is unattainable as well. And I am better than you. We ended up having this like millennial gray wave where everyone kind of tried to do the same sort of thing as these, you know pop stars and these social media icons but weren't quite able to do it so they just stripped all of the character and color from a space in an attempt to feel more modern and more calming but instead ended up creating a very sterile environment that just is devoid of any love or character. Now I definitely understand the sentiment that this, a lot of these mums have like they're talking about how overwhelming the world can be and having this nursery or their home being the one chill space for them, I can certainly understand that. Like for me, obviously I'm a color girly. So to me, this is a calming space. This is where I relax. This is where it makes me feel happy. But when you're going ahead and doing it 
to the extent where you're painting your child's toy because it doesn't match your aesthetic, I think is just a smidge too far. I honestly understand like, you know, not wanting to destroy your aesthetic. I am an interior designer. I get it. Like I've never liked the look of children's toys. I've always thought they were horrible, but like I felt like you couldn't really do anything about it. But I also know as well that even if these paints are non-toxic, they are still probably going to go in your child's mouth. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. I would just accept the fact that, you know, some of these toys are going to be against what I personally like. I wouldn't want a completely just solid wood block for my child. Like, sure, I wouldn't mind having the solid wood block having a color on it and having that well balance of naturalism and then also the color that my child needs but I think it's really fascinating to watch these parents think that they're better than these toy companies that you know will get sued if these children get sick and there have been plenty of recalls and everything so I understand why these parents are wanting to take it into their own hand but when they do not understand paint and they do not understand that you know they may be putting their child's life at risk for the sake of an aesthetic like it just sounds a little crazy to me now, I know that these sad beige mums aren't going to change just because of this video, but if you are one of them and you've gotten to this point of the video, I would like to give you some suggestions as a designer based on the science that I've read. Now, of course, I don't know everything about children's toys. I do not know very much about being a parent myself just as of yet, but just based on the science, this is what I would recommend. So when your child is really young, so probably under the six month mark, Go for really high contrasting toys, so black and white or brown and white, rather than these really subtle neutrals. So then it allows for that really strong contrast for your child so then they can pick up on it. From there, obviously, you will need to start incorporating color, and I'm sorry to say it, but you've just got to do it. Adding pastels is probably too subtle for your child to pick up on and it won't be as strong of a contrast that they need. And having something that's like super muted, so like obviously you can see my walls are red, but they're muted red. If everything's muted, it's all the same sort of tone. It might be still a bit difficult for your child to register and really make those differentiations. So you will still need the color, but then add in those more timber toys if you can afford them. And if you really don't like a gift that someone has given to you and you just really hate it for whatever reason, maybe it's a really annoying noise, maybe it's just too big, or maybe it is vibrant yellow and you just can't stand the color yellow, fine, go ahead and donate it and give it to someone else that really truly needs it. I think a creator you should definitely look at shortly after this if you are wanting some minimalism sort of inspiration, but that does have a smidge of color, but it's not garish. I would definitely look at Matt Devella's recent video because he actually talked about being a minimalist with a child and how he's kind of had to change. And, you know, you do actually see a lot of the toys and a lot of the items that he uses, and they are actually surprisingly not the stereotypical sort of toys and I'm sure they cost an arm and a leg but I think it's a really good video as a source of inspiration as to where you should probably be heading. I think it's probably a little too far gone that some of these mums have gone but I think he has found a pretty good balance with his wife. But yeah thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you have a colourful rest of your day and I will see you in the next not so beige adventure.